In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a sleek inverted custom cursor effect. We'll do that with Elementor Pro and without any additional plugin. Now you should be able to do it without Elementor Pro, but that would mean additional plugins. And if you're already using Elementor Pro, one less plugin is always nice to have. So this tutorial is super easy. You don't need to know how to code. All you need to know is how to copy and paste. And you can complete this tutorial in just minutes. Oh, and by the way, if my voice sounds a bit funny, it's because it is. I kind of lost it and it's just coming back. Okay, ready? Let's get started. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at what we are going to build. So as you can see, when I hover over elements, it shows the inverted state. And that works on text and it also works on images, as you can see here and here. Now, let's check the logo and it works also. So this logo is on a header that was made with Elementor Pro. And if I check the navigation and if I open the navigation, it works here too when I hover over the text element in the menu or the other elements here in the nav. Now, as you can see, it works on the buttons too. And I need to point out the fact that it's not just black and white, it's really the inverted color. So when I hover over this red button, the hover color is black. So the custom cursor inverted color is white and the text is black, if that makes sense. Now, let me show you below. So here we have a button that's transparent and when I hover over it, it's a red color. So when I hover over with the inverted custom cursor, the color is blue and then the text is black because it was white here. Are you still following? So as mentioned, it works on the text too, but let's see with a different color scheme. So here we have different colors and if I hover over this red element, once again, it goes blue and then I can hover over the faces and if you like The Walking Dead, you should load this effect. Now, let's look at the other elements and everything is inverted, but it needs to have a lot of contrast for it to show. So here there's not a lot of contrast between the smoke and the background, so you can't really see. You can see it, but it's not as dramatic as in other places. And in case you didn't notice, this custom cursor is pulsing. So if I zoom in, as you can see, the cursor is pulsing. Now, I know you want more of this, so here it is. Scary. So first of all, we need a few things to complete this project. And the first thing is a WordPress theme. So for that, you want to go to Appearance, Themes, and then you want to click on Add New. So I've already installed Astra, but basically you can install pretty much any compatible theme that you want. When I say compatible, it's compatible with Elementor. So just type Astra. And as you can see, I've already installed it. So next you want to go to Plugins, Add New. And then you want to install Elementor. So Elementor should be here on the first page, but in case you don't see it, just go to the search field and just type Elementor. And then once again, you will need to click on install and then activate. Next, you want to install Elementor Pro. And for that, you want to click on upload plugin. And then you just want to go and fetch the zip file that you've downloaded once you've purchased Elementor Pro. Just click on choose file and then proceed on installing the same way, just install and activate. Now, if you don't have Elementor Pro yet, you will find an affiliate link in the description below. Please know that I do receive a commission if you purchase through my link, but I only recommend Elementor Pro because I absolutely love it and commission actually support the channel, which is why I can keep on creating free content just for you. Okay, next let's give credit where it's due because I stumbled upon this question on Stack Overflow, a question asked by Pratik and it was answered by Kaido. So basically I use Kaido's code and I've slightly changed it to accommodate the Elementor version. Now don't worry, you won't need to know how to code, you only need to know how to copy and paste. But we'll be using a property called Mixed Blend Mode, so I went on the Can I Use website to make sure it's compatible with most browsers, which is the case. So always check when you're adding some code if it's going to be compatible with the browsers of your target market. Okay, next we need to know how to prepare our images assets. Now, of course, you want to have the exact images that I'm using, or you could, but more than likely you use your own images. But I just wanted to show you the effect that I used in the preview. So I won't go into each and every detail, but basically I want to show you the thought process so you can replicate. So the first part is to actually find a suitable image. So for example, this image, I thought it was really great, but it didn't suit my purpose because the legs are cut and we want the subject to be whole, if that makes sense. So as you can see here on the preview, if the subject was cut, it wouldn't have the same effect. We really want our subject to be complete. And the same goes for a second example. 
Okay, so I looked for some more stock images, as you can see here. And the final result is that I picked this one and this one. Okay, so the next step is to use our image with something like Photoshop, Affinity Photo, or the GIMP. Now, I usually do it with Photoshop, but not everybody has Photoshop, plus Photoshop is on another computer. So I'm going to show you how to do it with Affinity Photo, but basically you can do the same with the GIMP. So there are many tools, and to be honest, even though I love Affinity Photo, when it comes to isolating shapes and recreating backgrounds, I still think that Photoshop has an edge. But I'm gonna show you one way you can do it, whatever software you're using. So it may not be the easiest way and the best way, but it works. So basically this is our main image and I've put that image into another canvas and the size I've chosen is 2560 pixels wide by 1706 in height. So I've just duplicated my original image and then I can start working on it. So one way you can do it, and once again, there are much better ways to do this, but one way you can isolate the shape is just using the pen tool. So the shortcut is just the letter P and it's called the pen tool and more than likely in any software you're going to use, it's going to be the same thing. Otherwise, you just have to look for it. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start adding some points like this. Now, the best way is that I should just use the Bezier curves and just curve it and go all around. But when I'm in a hurry, I found that it works just as well. And I don't need to use each and any point, but basically you get the idea. I'm just going to circle around that shape. Okay, so that is the final result, as you can see here with the dotted line. And then I'm just going to copy that image and I'm just going to paste it on top. So you don't see a difference and that's normal, but I'm just going to deselect this and I'm going to disable this layer. And now I still have my base layer. So basically now we want to erase the subject from the background and there are different ways we can do this. Now with Affinity Photo, I can use a tool called In Painting Brush Tool which is the one I've just selected. And then I can just paint over the subject as I'm going to show you. And then I let Affinity Photo do its magic. So now we've isolated the subject from the background. Now the next step is to make the background full width. So for that, let's select our rectangular marquee tool. And I'm just going to select this portion, copy, paste, I'm just going to remove it here, copy, paste, and then I'm going to do the same on the other side. Now you can see the lines here, so I'm just going to select all three layers, group it, and I'm just going to rasterize this group. And then once again, I'm going to select the in painting brush tool, and then I'm just going to paint along the lines that I want to change, and the same here. Okay, already looking much, much better. Okay, I really want the fast way here because usually when it comes to the subject, I much prefer using masks, but the end result is the same. But with mask, it's better because you can still keep some of the shadows, some of the little details like the hair. For example, some of the hair that you can see here, you can really work on it with a mask. But that's not the scope of this tutorial. Okay, so now that we got our background and our subject isolated, we can add additional assets like text, and then we can isolate each and every element. I could save just the text or the text with the background, or if I want, I can just save my subject. Now, ideally for the subject that you see here, I would create a new document or just clone this document, and then I would just crop and make it the right dimensions. So like this, like this, and like this. And then I would save it as a PNG file because I want to retain the transparent background. And by the way, in Photoshop, the transparent background is shown by default, but when using Affinity Photo, you need to go to Document, Transparent Background. Otherwise, it's gonna be white as you can see here. So once again, Document, Transparent Background. Okay, so as you can see, I saved all my assets here in a dedicated folder. So this is my background. This is the background with the text. This is our subject and so on. Now, let me show you something. So if I pick this one here, it's 1.2 megabytes, which is a big no-no. That's way too heavy. You don't want that. So we're going to use a website called scooge.app, which is a website made by Google in order to convert JPEGs and PNGs into WebP format. Now, if you don't know, the WebP format is a really lightweight format. And the good news is that now you can use it natively within WordPress. So all we need to do is drag the image here. And the next thing you want to change to WebP. So 
so that the conversion is made into WebP and then you need to play with the quality settings. So let me pick 80. And as you can see, we have a 90% reduction. So we went from 1.2 megabyte to 118 kilobytes, 90% reduction. And here you can see the difference. Now, can you see a difference? Well, I can't. I don't know how the compression is going to play here on YouTube, but let me tell you, you can't really see the difference. Now, basically you wanna do this for each and every asset. So for example, our subject here is 1.6 megabyte as a transparent PNG. And now if we check the WebP version, it's 116 kilobytes. So let me show you. So that's the original and that's the WebP image. Can you spot a difference? But well, I can't. So you get the ID now, and this one is a bit more complex, but just to show you, this was the original image and this is the final result. And I can just remove everything. So basically I did the same thing. I isolated the shape. So the shape is a couple and I added some smoke. So this is what I isolated here, just the couple. And then I removed the background just as I shown you previously. And once again, this gets a bit easier with Photoshop. It's also quite good with Affinity Photo, but like I said, whichever software you use, you should be able to do it. Okay, so here we have the smoke and the couple. And then I just added the text behind the couple. And that's about it. Okay, next we need to create our page. So in the WordPress dashboard, go to pages, add new. And then you want to give it a title. Let's call it home. And then because I'm using Astra, I want to disable the title. And then I'm going to click on publish once and then a second time. Okay, it says home is now live. And now I'm going to click with edit with Elementor. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to open the navigator. So here at the bottom left corner of the window, I want to click on the navigator icon to toggle it. And as you can see, it appeared here. You can also use command plus I on a Mac and I guess control plus I on a Windows PC. Okay, so first I'm going to click on the plus sign, select a one column layout. I want to make it full width. Now the height, I want to make it a minimum height of 100 VH. Next, make sure the column position is in the middle. And next I want to click on the style tab. Then I want to click on the background type. I'm going to select classic and then click on image. And now you can upload an image here or just drag and drop it. I've already added my images. So I'm going to select this background here. So it's just the plain background with the text warrior. I want the repeat to be no repeats and the size to be cover. Okay, next I want to click on the advanced tab and where it says padding, I'm just going to add zero. So it's got zero padding all around. Now, depending on your use case, you may want to change this. Next, I want to select my column. And in my case, it's easier to actually click here in the navigator. So with my column selected, I'm just going to go to advanced. And once again, I'm going to type zero where it says padding. Okay, next I'm going to click on the widgets icon. And then I'm just going to drag an inner section within my column. Now I know not one of the best practices, but if I wanted to do it another way, it's possible, but it's going to be a bit more complicated. So let's keep it simple here. Okay. So with our inner section selected, I want to change the content width to full width. And next, once again, I'm going to click on our widgets icon and I'm just going to drag a image widget in the first column. So let me click on the image. And once again, I already have my subject added to the media library. So I'm just going to add it here. And then I'm going to click on style and where it says width, I'm just going to select a percentage of 60%. So as you can see, it's much better. And next I'm going to select my second column within the inner section and I'm going to change the vertical alignment to middle. Then once again, I'm going to click on the widget icon and I'm just going to drag a button widget to the second column. Okay, next let me move the navigator and still with my button selected, I'm going to change the alignment that you can see here to center and now it's centered. So let me change the text to start now and then I'm going to add an icon from the icon library and I'm going to select ticket. Next, I'm going to make the icon go after the text with a spacing of 12. Next, I click on the style tab and then I can start changing things around. Okay, so the text color is going to be white. It's already the case, but just to make sure. So our background color, now you can select pretty much any color that you want. I'm going to select my accent color. 
Next, you want to add a solid border, which is going to be one pixel all around. The color is going to be, once again, my accent color, and I want the border radius to be 90. And then I'm just going to unlink the padding values, and I want it to be 22 on top, 80 on the right, 22 at the bottom, and 80 pixels on the left-hand side. Next, I'm going to click on the advanced tab and then where it says motion effect, I'm going to select an entrance animation, which is going to be fade in with an animation delay of 300 milliseconds. And as you can see here, the button is right in the middle of the text. So I'm going to select my second column of the intersection and then I click on the advanced tab. I'm going to unlink the margin values. Now you may want to play with these values. So let me try 350 pixels. Okay, and it's much better. Okay, last but not least, I want to select my first section here, then go back to style. And then where it says scrolling effects, I want to turn it on. And then I'm just going to pick a vertical scroll with the default settings. So now we have this parallax effect. Okay, now let's create our second section. So I'm just going to scroll down and click on the plus button. Once again, I'm going to select a one column layout. This time I want the content width to be boxed, but I want to change the height to a minimum height of 100 VH. Let's zoom back. Okay, next I want to click on the style tab, click on the background type classic, and I'm going to pick the black color. And next I'm going to click on the widgets icon and I'm just going to drag a heading. So the heading is going to say, are you ready? I'm just going to center the text, go to style, and I'm going to change the color to white. And then I'm going to click on typography. So the font is Poppins, and I'm going to give it 112 pixels. Next, I want to add a button, but instead of redoing everything from scratch, I'm just gonna go here on top, right click on my button, and I'm just going to copy it. And then I'm going to right click on the text and just paste it. And then I'm just going to change the text to tour dates. And next I'm going to click on the icon from the icon library and I'm going to start typing calendar and I pick this one here. And next I just want to invert the color. So let's go to style. So the text color is still going to be white. The background color is going to be transparent. The color for the outline is going to be white one more time. And then when we hover over the element, the color is going to be white. The background is going to be our accent color. You may pick any color that you want. And same thing for our border color. Next, you want to click on the advanced tab. And then I'm going to unlink the margin values and I want to give it a top margin of 70 pixels so that there's more vertical space. Okay, next, make sure you save your work. So I'm just going to click on update. Now to match the demo, we still need two additional sections, but in order to go a little bit faster, I've used the cheat code. So I've already prepared section number three and section number four. But if you want to go faster, just duplicate section one and two, and then change things accordingly. And always make sure you save your work. Okay, next we need to add our HTML and JavaScript code. So in WordPress, you want to go to Elementor, custom code, and then you want to add a new custom code. So I'm going to name it inverted HTML and JS. And next you want to select the location and that's very, very important. You want to select the body and. Next, you want to copy the code from the companion blog post and you find the link in the description of this video. So just copy the whole code and then go back and just paste it here. And as promised, just copy and paste and then click on publish. So it's going to ask you where do you want to display your code. And by default, it says entire site. And that's what we're going to use. So save and close. Now the Elementor Pro code checker is giving you some errors because he wants you to use single quotes instead of double quotes, but it works fine. Now, in case there were any issues, you could come back here and change the double quotes by single quotes. But once again, with this code, it works fine on my end. Okay, next, let's add some CSS magic. So once again, you want to go to the companion blog post for which you find the link in the description below and you want to select all the CSS code and then you want to go back to your page. And in case you haven't refreshed the page yet after you added the JavaScript code, you need to refresh now. So make sure everything is saved. Mine is already saved and I'm just going to refresh the page. Okay, so that now the JavaScript and HTML code is taken into account. Okay, next you want to click on the hamburger icon and click on site settings. So let me 
zoom back and then you want to click on custom CSS and then I'm just going to paste the code. So this is a global CSS code is going to happen on the whole website. So I'm just going to click on update and as you can see, it already works. So let's close this and now let's check the front end. And as you can see, it's working fine. Exactly what we had in the preview. So let's take a look. And once again, the walking dead. Now it works on the text too. And as promised is pulsing. Now, how does it work on the tablet and the mobile? Now, because this is a mouse hover state, it doesn't really make sense to use this in the tablet and mobile versions. So in the code, I've actually wrapped the whole code within a media query that says that this code should only be taken into account starting at 1367 pixels. Now you may want to change this number in order to accommodate to other devices, but basically that's the idea. Something else, if you want to change the size of the pointer, is going to happen here. So here it's 5 REM, 5 REM, you can make it 50 REM, that's going to be huge, or 1 REM, that's going to be tiny, or you can use pixels, you can use EMs, you can use whatever measure you want. And when it comes to the pulsing effect, you can also change the size. So if you go back to the code, it goes from 1 to 0 0.9, back to 1, back to 0 0.9. You could change this to 1.2 and this to 1.8 and the effect will be more dramatic. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but this demo is using a gorgeous full screen navigation that you can see here. As you can see, it slides up and down and then slides back up. So one more time, up and down and slides back up. So if you are interested on how to create such a beautiful navigation, it's a lucky day because I created the tutorial specifically about that. You find the link in the description below and also in the video cards at the end of this video. So if you want to combine what you learned today with the inverted cursor effect with a beautiful full screen navigation, make sure you go and watch this tutorial. Now, needless to say that custom mouse cursors are really trendy when it comes to current web design. So if you want more of this eye candy stuff, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Now, you may be wondering, how do I create this beautiful branding for my demos? So if you're interested, I created a free brand identity guideline that you can download on my website. Initially, it was made for Affinity Designer, but you can use it with Adobe Illustrator with a workaround. So if you're interested, just go to casino.com forward slash branding. Now tell me, which other eye candy effect you'd like me to cover on this channel? Please let me know in the comments below. Now remember, I'm trying to build the content I wish I had when I got started. So I hope I see you around. I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, take care and stay safe.